Hey, Trev, it's Trevor Gross from SeedTigers.com. Uh, you got the emotion of senior day behind you. Uh, it's going to be cold up in Blacksburg. I know you you played in colder weather up at Boston College a couple of years ago, but um, how much are you looking forward to playing up there uh, on the road for the first time since Georgia Tech? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I'm excited uh, just to get to play another week. Honestly, uh, doesn't really matter where to me, but. It is a cool place. I wish it was going to be packed out because I heard it's a really cool environment. But uh, just really excited to go up there. Maybe it'll snow. The first snow game I'll be a part of if it does. So all the guys are excited. Um, obviously, coming down the stretch, we know all these games super important, especially where we're at in the season. And we're just excited to play another week. But, um, but yeah. Trev, there was a moment in the um, in, in the game on Saturday. Uh, it, it was a third and five. Uh, Y'all hadn't scored in well over a quarter, um, and it just seemed like Pitt had some momentum going. I don't know if it was a quarterback draw or if you just decided to take off, but you had to break a couple tackles to pick up the first down, and then you scored that touchdown. Um, is that just one of those times when you just, as a leader, just have to take it upon yourself when you when you feel like you need a big momentum play? Yeah, like I said after the game, Pitt presented presented some ch some challenges, and obviously the score was was lopsided. But um, they're a good team, a really good defense that's disciplined and do some things that are that are tough as an offense to to manage. So I uh, had to kind of feel that out, figure it out during the game, make some adjustments, and uh, that was just an example of when my numbers called, just doing whatever I can to get the first down, keep the chains moving, and do whatever I can to help the team. Obviously, we kind of hit a little. Uh, dead spot in that second quarter, but picked it back up and uh, got it got it back rolling. So that felt good. But yeah, I mean, just doing whatever I can to to keep the drive alive and get us in a position to score. So. Yeah. Hey, Trevor, this is Cam Gaskins with ABC Columbia. You and Darian have kind of been side by side all through the off season, uh, through everything from the protests to we want to play. Well, what did it mean to you to see him get that award yesterday? Yeah, I mean, it was just awesome. Uh, his journey has been pretty special and just to see obviously I haven't been here the whole time with him but the last three years just to see how how he handles himself uh, the amount of time he puts in just really caring for other people and doing things that I mean don't even necessarily affect him um, but just trying to help people and just a just a really good guy I uh, can't think of a better person and I, I think that that award kind of describes it perfectly um, just a guy that's that's believed in himself believed in the process and Came to Clemson kind of on a whim, and he's from right down the road, but walked on here, earned a scholarship, um, has, is probably the best leader on this team, uh, just a guy that, that cares a lot about people, and I, I just, I'm proud of him and uh, proud to be his friend. Hey, Trevor, uh, David with ESPN. You guys pushed so hard to get to play this year, um, and then obviously you ended up running into some of those same obstacles that I think were, were so, such a big concern at the beginning of the year. Um, do you kind of look back on, on you know, what your thought process was in August and, and would you do anything differently? Do you, are, you, are you still as happy that you have been able to get onto the field as, as you were, as the season been a frustration at all, the way that, that some of these things have gone? Or how, how do you kind of evaluate all of that? Yeah, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. I think obviously there's been some frustrating moments, but just with the, this whole year, this whole situation is, you know, we can't control it. Um, there's going to be situations that you kind of just have to figure out. No one's been through it before. And so we're all trying to figure it out. But I think for the most part, you look around, and I think people have done the best they can. And we're, we're making it work. Obviously, it's not ideal. Um, this whole situation isn't ideal. No one would, would choose it. But um, just making the best out of what we got. And I think that we've done that. I know firsthand that we've done that here. Obviously, everything hasn't been perfect, like I said. But I don't regret anything. I would do it all over again. Um, I'm just super grateful that I got to, you know, play this season, this team. I think super special, and uh, just getting that opportunity to to play with these guys and to, you know, really uh, show something for the hard work that we put in. You know, we've been working since January to to, to play this season, to get ready, and uh, it's kind of it's cool to be able to get to experience that and get to play a season. Obviously, during these times, it's hard, and you see some of the stuff and college and the NFL, a lot of games getting postponed and canceled. But I mean, what I, the way I see it, there's a lot more positives and negatives. And uh, there's a lot of people obviously that talk about the negatives, but I think it's, it's been a, a success so far. Do you, do you 
feel like the season needs to end with a national title or an ACC title or anything like that for it to have been a valuable kind of live up to your hopes type of season or kind of given the fact that, you know, you had so much growth, I guess, personally in the off season and, you know, that you've overcome the stuff that you've overcome this year to play that, that you found sort of a value in, in being here this year that is defined by something more than where you finish the season. Yeah, I think either way, um, regardless of what happens in football, the season, whatever, I've became a better person. I've learned a lot about myself, about, um, you know, who I want to be, um, just all those things. Just like I said, learn more about myself and become a better person through this whole process. And obviously I want that to end in a good way football wise. And hopefully we get a chance to play for an ACC championship and playoff national championship, all those things really hope that happens. You know, that's kind of been the goal all along, but through the process, I've learned a lot. And definitely if something happened, either we, you know, weren't able to make it there or just something happened with the season. I mean, I wouldn't look at this time as, as wasted, but it would definitely be really disappointing. So that's something that we've been working for. Um, and hopefully we'll get that opportunity. Trevor, uh, Larry Williams with Tiger Illustrated. Trade.com. Uh, Tony Elliott said after the game, and I'm sorry if you were asked about this after the game, but he said that he told your parents, I think, that you may made have made him a better man. Um, how do you process something like that? What does it mean to you? And and what is he? What do you think he's he's talking about uh, when he says that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just um, just the people we have here. It's not just me. I think there's a lot of people that that make everyone better. And I know Coach Elliott's made, made me a better person. So it just kind of goes full circle. And uh, it's really just a blessing to be around people that really care about you. Uh, and I can honestly say that it's not about how I play or how many games we win, championships we win. I think the people here genuinely care about each other. And that, and that shows. And when he says something like that, obviously, um, you know, all I've tried to do is, I, I mean, I've been trying to figure out life how, in my time here, but I've just tried to treat people well. And I think um, I usually do a, a pretty good job of that. Obviously, it's still something I can get better at. But just that's just my philosophy is treat people well, treat people how you want to be treated, and um, treat everybody the same. And that's something that I always try to do. And I really appreciate Coach E, obviously. He's been an example for me, how he carries himself. He's not the, the loudest guy always out there, rah, rah, uh, talking all the time. But he's when he says something, he really means it. And as an offense, I think everyone respects him. And on the team, too, everyone respects who he is and kind of his journey. Obviously, um, his story is, is pretty um, special, what he's had to overcome and just have a lot of respect for the man he is and how he carries himself. Trevor Brad from Clemson SI. Um, this receiving core that you have this year, you know, have they kind of maybe, in, in your opinion, flown under the radar a little bit? And how would you compare them to some other receiving groups that you've had the previous two seasons? Yeah, it's just uh, we don't necessarily have that big name that people are talking about all offseason, all year. That's, you know, has all these expectations like, you know, T and Justin and um, other guys in the past. I mean, that's we've always kind of had that guy, but this year's a little bit different. You know, everyone's kind of playing their role and, and doing it well. We've had some new guys like that have kind of blown up. I mean, Cornell, obviously in camp, <clears throat> we knew he was going to have a good year. Just he had a really good camp and um, was just was just playing really well. So we kind of expected it, but got people on the outside have, have really come to notice like how, how he's playing. He's playing really well. So that's been cool to see. And then just all the other guys, it's been a lot of a lot of guys getting touches, some young guys. You got EJ, Brandon Spector, um, obviously. Frank and Joe haven't been playing as of as of late, but hopefully get them back soon. And I think it's been a little bit surprising to a lot of other people who's who's played and who's kind of made a name for themselves. But I think being a part of the program and seeing it every day, it's not really surprising. But um, yeah, it's been cool to be a part of that. It's it's definitely different than years past, but um, it's still still awesome. Hey, Trevor, it's Chase Goodbread with NFL.com. I, I was on campus a couple days for the Pitt game, and one of the things that I heard from a couple students about you is that before COVID, when we could all be a little closer, 
you would occasionally catch a moped ride from like a random student you didn't even know just to get from one part of campus to another. Is, can you confirm that? Not random students. Usually they were uh, some of my teammates and well, maybe one of my friends before, but not random students. I'm not that that tr uh, I don't I'm not that trusting of everybody. <laughs> but uh, I would I would hop on the back of a moped occasionally. <laughs> so I think there's some pictures out there. Yeah. Um. And just as a quick follow up, what are are there any techniques that you've kind of had to pick up the last three years just to get around without having too many people surround you, like learning where back doors to buildings and restaurants are and things like that? Yeah, definitely the, you know, the right time to go places like the grocery store. Um, so I'm not going to say exactly when I go, that could be a problem, but uh, then like you said, like back doors, we'll throw a hood on, but also too, I mean, it's, I know kind of the role I play and, and who I am and that it's just, that's just how it is. When I go out in public, people want to talk get a picture or whatever. So I know that that's part of it. And, you know, there's some days when I kind of embrace that more and some days where I'm like, I just kind of want to, have dinner with Marissa or my family or whatever, and not really, um, you know, talk to anybody else. So there's times I kind of hide myself more and sometimes I'll just go out and um, be a little bit more talkative, more outgoing. So there's definitely times when I do both, but yeah, I've learned a few things. Thanks. Trevor, this is Grace with The Athletic. Um, Coach Sweeney about an hour ago was saying that if Clemson's goal was for you to win the Heisman. You would have already done it by now. Um, but obviously Clemson hasn't ever had a Heisman winner. I, I just wanted to ask you what it would mean to you now that you're fresh on voters' minds again, um, if you were to be able to deliver Clemson its first ever Heisman trophy, what that would mean to you. Yeah, it would be obviously be a huge honor. Something I grew up, um, I wouldn't say necessarily, necessarily dreaming about. That wasn't ever the main goal for me or I mean that's obviously something as a kid it's cool to look at and be like man I hope I can do that one day so I definitely have had that thought but grew up watching it have a lot of respect for everyone that's won it it's a really prestigious award obviously but uh to be honest I just I don't I don't think about it too much that's just it's like any award that you I mean it's it's special in the sense that it is the most prestigious award in, in college football which is awesome but people still vote on it and it's it's kind of a hard thing to say like, how do you compare players? Um, I mean, sometimes it's easy, but sometimes you compare a quarterback to a running back to a receiver. I mean, it's just hard to, it's hard to compare that. So I don't really take too much stake in that necessarily. It would be a huge honor and whoever wins that um, deserves it. You know, they, obviously you, you're playing at a super high level if you can win that award. But um, if I win it, that'll be great. It'd be a huge honor for me, be big for Clemson University, for my family. Um, and I'd love that, but regardless, I mean, it doesn't change anything. Uh, I still know who I am, still believe in myself, have confidence in myself. and uh, But I mean, it would be really cool and definitely something that obviously hasn't happened here before. Hey, Travis, Trevor again. Um, speaking of the Heisman, I, I guess, you know, Travis has kind of like lost some attention as far as that goes, but, um, you know, he hasn't had the rushing yards for, for obvious reasons the way teams are playing, playing y'all and stopping the run, but uh, Coach Sweeney talks about just how much he means uh, just his presence on the field and for teams having to to adapt and account for him. Um, how much have you been able to take advantage of that just through, you know, we saw this on, a lot of that on Saturday just with, with the fake pitches and, and the play action. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, he's just a problem for, for teams to try to figure out. So when you have a guy like that, that obviously takes – more attention from the defense and opens other things up. It's like football. It's always give and take. Uh, as an offense, you want to do something schematically, then you're going to – to get an advantage in one area, you're going to lose it in another. And same thing defensively. To, to stop Travis, then you're going to lose a little bit in the in your pass defense. And that's just how it is. Or, or vice versa. If you want to stop the pass, you're lighter in the box, all those things. So it's just the game of football. You have to figure out what you want to do, uh, what risks you want to take. And I think Travis puts a ton of stress on a defense trying to figure out how do we stop this? I mean, he can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He can do anything in the passing game, run game. They can use him a ton of different ways. Um, so that's a huge challenge. And just having a guy like that is, I mean, it's super valuable. It makes it hard for the defense, like I said. But um, I think you can't really measure his value to this team, it's, it's just amazing all the things he can do and how he helps. I mean, you see since he's been here how successful 
the teams have been and how successful he's been. So it kind of speaks for itself. Hey, Trevor, it's Mark from WIFF. Following up on Grace's question, I'm sure there's nothing Dabo tells us that he wouldn't tell you privately, but when you hear him say, regardless of the Heisman, Trevor Lawrence is the best player in college football, what does that mean to you? Just that he believes in me. I mean, he's believed in me um, pretty much since I got here. Obviously, I had to prove myself, and um, he's never wavered. You know, I just I feel full support from him, from everyone here, really, but... Um, just has always had confidence in me. And that as a quarterback, that means a lot when you're when the head man believes in you and has confidence and, and really doesn't put any limits on you. So uh, just kind of affirms that I've known that cause he's he's expressed it to me. But um, definitely is a guy that personally I love playing for. Um, he believes in all of his players and, and me. So it's, it's special. How would you describe how your relationship has grown with him from the time you got to campus to now? Um, I think just, I guess as being a freshman, it's more just, yes, sir, kind of like whatever, like I just, you get coached and you say yes, sir, and move on. Now we have more conversations and um, just kind of built that relationship. We've had a lot of, obviously this year, we've had a lot of conversations really about everything and meetings and just a lot of different things. So um, we've gotten closer. Can I feel comfortable going to him about anything. If there's an issue I see, um, internally, whatever that may be, I feel like I can go up there and, and talk to him and he'd receive it, receive it. And I think that's one of the best things about Coach Sweeney is I think pretty much everybody on the team almost has his phone number and anyone can call him or text him at any time and he'll, he'll pick up. So uh, that's special. I know there's not a lot of coaches that necessarily do that. And I know if I need to meet with him uh, whenever he's free, I can just pop up there and talk to him. So I feel like we're, we have a really good relationship. Um, and like I said, it's, it goes deeper than football. He's taught me a lot of just how to deal with, um, obviously he has a huge, he's under a, he's under a mi microscope and has a huge spotlight on his life. And he's kind of taught me how to deal with that. And I've learned a lot from him of just, um, you got to live your life. And obviously there's a lot of things said about coach Sweeney, but at the end of the day, um, he's got to do what he thinks best and live his life. And you can't always listen to what other people say. So I've learned a lot from him of just how to handle that. And I think that's probably the biggest thing. Um, that I appreciate from him.